Hey guys, it's Miss Future here. This is uh, video 3.1, Graphs of Quadratic Functions. We have three types that we're going to graph today. We're going to graph it in standard form, we're going to graph quadratics in vertex form, and we're going to graph them in intercept form. So let's go over those three things. Okay, we're going to start with standard form. The standard form of a quadratic is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And this is for a is not zero, obviously, because if a was zero, then it wouldn't be quadratic, it would be linear. Now when a is a positive number, so here we have a is greater than zero, we have a happy parabola. It's smiling. And when a is negative, so like over here, a is less than zero, then it's frowning and we have a sad parabola. In a happy parabola, your vertex, which is right here, is your minimum. But in a sad parabola, your vertex, which is right here, is your maximum. And to find the axis of symmetry, this red line of any parabola, get ready to write this down, x equals, because it is a vertical line, so you have to put x equals, negative b over 2a, with this being a and this being b. You can always find your axis of symmetry, which therefore would be the x-coordinate of your vertex also, using negative b over 2a. And that's going to be important to you later, so maybe box it, star it, highlight it, I don't know, tape it to your forehead, do something important with it. So whenever you are asked to plot a graph and you've, you're given the quadratic in standard form, the first thing you want to do is find the vertex. Write that down, it's important. First, find the, ver the vertex. And I just told you how to find the x-coordinate, negative b over 2a, and then once you find that x-coordinate, you plug it in here and here to get your y-coordinate. So then you have your vertex and you can plot it. And then, wherever that is on the graph, just pick some x's on either side and plug them in and solve for y so that you can make yourself a table and get some points. Okay, and when you graph a parabola for me, I'm requiring a minimum of five points. Now, that sounds like a lot, but the vertex is one of those, and then this one is going to be mirrored to this side, so those two really only, you have to only think for one, and then those two mirror, so you really only have to think for three points and then mirror those over. So it's not too bad. I think five points is fair. In fact, we're going to write that down. Plot five points minimum. Another easy little trick you can use when um, using standard form and graphing is to know if you plugged in an x of 0, then this would be 0, and this would be 0. So this c is always your y-intercept. c is the y-intercept. So that also gives you a good reference point. And of course, you can reflect it over the axis of symmetry. Um, so, oh look, you don't even have to think about that. You only have to think about one other point. So let's do an example. I want you guys to graph y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 5 without a calculator. So first thing you're going to do is negative b over 2a to figure out your axis of symmetry. So b is 4. Negative 4 over 2 times a is 2. Negative 4 divided by 2 times 2 gives you negative 1. So I know, and I'm going to dot it in, don't draw it as a solid line, but you can dot it in, that there's the axis of symmetry. So now I'm going to plug in a negative 1. I've got 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 5. Gives me 2 minus 4 minus 5, which is negative 7. So now I know my vertex is at negative 1, negative 7, and I'm going to plot that point there. All right, another point that I know automatically is that if I plugged in a 0 for x, my y-intercept is going to be negative 5. So right there. 
And I know that parabolas are symmetric, so I'm going to put a point there. So now I really only have to think hard for one more point. So I'm going to pick 1. Plug it in, I get 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 5 gives me 2 plus 4 minus 5, which is 1. So I have a point at 1, 1, and I can mirror it across my axis of symmetry. So there are your five required points, and there's your parabola graphed. And that's it. It didn't take that long. Okay, so now you know. Okay, the next form we're going to discuss is vertex form. You can think of this as the parent function form. And we just spent a, a while talking about transformations with um, absolute value graphs. Well, they work the exact same way with uh, quadratics. So vertex form looks like this. It's y equals, and then we have a, which is our vertical structure compression, um, b, which is our horizontal con structure compression, x minus c, c being our horizontal shift, all squared, and then plus d being our vertical shift. Now, we're going to simplify that down just a little bit. Um, and we're going to say y equals a. We're not going to worry about b for the quadratics. We're just not. We're going we're gonna to leave it out. So we're going to say x minus c squared plus d. That's a 2. And then, as we've talked about before, some books, and I think ours even does it, they don't use C and D, they use H and K. But it doesn't matter, they're the same thing. And it's called vertex form because when you take your parabola and your vertex, which is normally at 0, 0, just like with the uh, absolute values, it's going to translate H units horizontally and k units vertically and so it's going to land at hk. That is your vertex and that's why they call this vertex form because you can see the vertex right there in the way it's written. So here's an example. Let's graph y equals negative one-half times x plus 3l squared plus 2. And the first thing I'm going to ask you is what are the transformations? And based on what we just learned, we can know that this negative is a reflection across the x-axis, which will take our parabola from happy to sad, right? This one-half is going to be a vertical compression by a half. As our parabola is, oh, class is over, is going to get wider, right? Because it compresses vertically. It squishes down and it gets wider. This plus 3 is going to shift us to the left 3. Plus 2, sorry about that, will shift us up 2. Taking our vertex to negative 3, 2. Negative 3, right? Because plus goes left, so negative. So now we're going to plot the graph of that. Like I said, the vertex is at negative 3, 2. Unfortunately, we don't have any other easy points we can pull from this equation. So now all you have to do is pick some other x's and solve for y, plot some points. And really, it's not, um, you know, as complicated as it sounds because you're just you know where the middle is. So pick the next x. Pick x is negative two and plug it in. Negative one half times negative two plus three, all squared plus two. So we have negative one half times negative 2 plus 3 is 1, squared is 1, plus 2. Negative 1 half plus 2 is 1 and a half. So we have a point there. And we know it's going to mirror across, so I've got that same point there at negative 4, 1.5. We could plug in a 1, negative 1 half times, I'm sorry, a negative 1. So negative 1 plus 3 squared plus 2. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2 squared is 4. Bell again, aren't y'all excited? Negative one half times four is negative two plus two is zero. So here, and it mirrors across to here. And that's five points, so that's enough. And when you draw, here's a here's a tip. When you're drawing a parabola and you've got five little points over here, don't extend it out very far. Because if you draw something extended out really far, you're probably going to draw it in the wrong place. And drawing it small is fine. I'd rather it be small and correct than big and wrong, right? Okay. Um, 
Now, a lot of times when we are giving quizzes and tests over this, we're going to ask you for different attributes of these. So we might ask you, where's the vertex? Well, we already wrote that down. Um, it might ask you, where's the axis of symmetry? And even though we can't do negative b over 2a with this type of um, form, we know where the vertex is, so we know where the axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 3. They might ask you for the x-intercepts, and if they're nice and clear, then all you have to do is write down your ordered pairs. So our x-intercepts are at negative 5, 0, and these do have to be written as ordered pairs, and at negative 1, 0. If you see the words x-intercepts, you have to write ordered pairs. Maybe they'll ask you for the domain. Well, it's a parabola. It's all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. And if they asked you for the range, be careful. We always go least to greatest or bottom to top. So the bottom of this parabola is negative infinity, and the top of it is at 2, and it does touch the 2. I might also ask you, where is it increasing and decreasing? So where is this sucker increasing? Well, it starts increasing over here infinitely to the left, and it's going up, up, up until it gets to the top of the mountain, right? At negative 3. And then it's done increasing, and then it's decreasing from the top of the mountain at negative 3 all the way infinitely down. Okay, now the last form that we're going to graph today is intercept form. So you know how, I'm sure you've done this before, you take a quadratic and you can factor it. And one of the handy things about factoring is when you've got it factored into two binomials, you can set each one equal to zero and find your x-intercepts. And that is why this is called intercept form. So if I set each of these equal to zero, then I know that I have a zero zeros at P and Q. So that's why it's called intercept form. Okay, so this time we're going to graph y equals 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 4. So that's the factored version or the intercept form um, of a quadratic. It's still quadratic because it's still an x squared. What we do is we say, well, where are the zeros? When you have it in intercept form, the first thing that you want to find are the zeros, because if I set each piece equal to zero, don't worry about that two. If you set two equal to zero, nothing's going to happen. But if I set each of these factors equal to zero, I get negative two and positive four. So those are my x-intercepts. x-intercepts are ordered pairs. Um, sorry, negative two, zero, and four, zero are my x-intercepts, and we can plot those on the graph. Here and here. So when it's in intercept form, find the intercepts first. All right, now you can find your axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. Because it's always going to be halfway between any two points on your parabola, right? So it's got to be right here. You can use the midpoint formula if you want to, or you can just look and say halfway between negative 2 and positive 4 is 1. So our axis of symmetry is at x equals 1. That's also going to give you the x-coordinate of your vertex. So you can plug in a 1. We have 2 times 1 plus 2 times 1 minus 4 gives us 2 times 3 times negative 3, which is negative 18. So now we know our vertex is at 1, negative 18. That's a big number. I didn't leave enough space for that on this grid. Um, what can we do? Well, what if your grid's too small? What do you do? You change your scale. So I'm going to count these by twos. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and now I can fit it on there. Only it's there. Um, I don't think I can draw this. Hold on. I got it. Anytime you change the scale on a graph that you're drawing, all you have to do is make sure you label 
the points on your scale that you're changing or write it out. And these are negative numbers, by the way. Um, so we would say scaled by 2 if you wanted to tell me. But you do have to tell me. You can't just let me figure it out on my own because I'm not. I'm not that smart. All right, so now we've got three points on our, on our uh, parabola, and we have a minimum of five. So now you just pick anything in between here that you want. I, you can pick zero or negative one or one or two. I think zero is pretty easy to plug in. So if I plugged in a zero, I would have, I don't have any room to write it, but let's just look. I'd plug in a zero here and here. So I'd have two times two times negative four. If I plugged in a zero, I'd get four times negative four is negative 16. So that's right here because we're counting by twos and it mirrors across to here. And now you have a minimum of five points on your graph and you are golden. There's your parabola drawn. So now I leave you with this one little, you know, puzzle to do to figure out for me. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to go eat my lunch and you guys are going to have a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.